Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 14th video tutorial on using Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. In this video we're going to talk about designing Native American flutes um, with a taper in the bore, also known as a bore perturbation. In this video, we'll discuss what is a bore taper, why you would want to use it, and briefly, because this isn't a tutorial on how to make flutes, just to design them, we'll discuss how you might construct a bore taper, um, and how such a taper is parameterized in WI Designer. And then we'll give you a, a scenario where we try to make a flute without a taper. And this this will be a harder one than we've done in some of the other tutorials. And then we'll show how we can successfully make it with a taper. And then finally we'll close with modifying the taper design constraints so we have show how we have control of that taper and what effect that control has on the ultimate tuning of the flute. That said, let's bring up the program. Now the scenario we're going to run is, is a hard one um, for any of us to make from scratch. We're going to open up one of the sample files that came with the program for an instrument. And we're going to go all the way to a one inch bore. And uh, this says for an 18 to 1 um, bore ratio, uh, it'll make a D sharp E flat flute. Uh, so let's open it. Um, it's a s almost an 18 inch bore and a one inch diameter. That's why it's an 18 to 1. And let's bring up a tuning file, and that, that is also uh, provided with the, with the samples, just to see what that sample looks like. We'll open that up, and D sharp 4, chromatic tuning, yep, that's what we want. And there's all the notes, all the chromatic notes, um, skipping uh, three semitones uh, between the the fundamental and the next note as it is common with these flutes with a six hole flute in particular um, going up to the octave and then the three semitones uh, in the second octave and because I've made these flutes before I will tell you that making the diminished ninth on these flutes on any low flute is really problematic when you do a chromatic flute. So, um, and, and there are ways around it, but for brevity on this tutorial, we're just not going to optimize for that note in either of the fingerings that I typically use. And so now if we see what our starter flute, what, uh, how well it was tuned, we can see that for the um, the minor notes, it's tuned really quite well. So if we were just doing a pentatonic minor or a, a one four, a mode one four flute, um, we we wouldn't have any any problems with this flute as is. But if we were doing a chromatic flute with the notes that we've specified, with the fingerings that we've specified, um, you can see there are one two three, four, five, six notes that are um, really quite bad. The second octave is, in particular, almost a semitone off. So um, first let's, let's now then talk. So this, this is the scenario we're going to try to solve. We'll try to solve it without tapers, and we'll try to solve it with a taper. So what is a taper? Um, it's represented in as the bore points and the implementation in 
WI design or the current implementation for designing taper, not using it in calculations, but actually to design the shape of that taper, um, we'll just use four bore, bore points. So let's add two more bore points um, to this. I've added two bore points. Let's do one of the typical scenarios, which is uh, I'll type it and then you can see it. Um, the bore diameter at the top is bigger than at the bottom. And let's start um, the taper. Oh, let's start it at 5 inches. And let's end it at 10 inches. At which point then it will go back down to the the terminal bore diameter which is one inch. So to make that clear what we're doing let's just look at that flute and let's expand it so you can see. You can see the top of the flute has a bigger diameter it's 1.2 inches than the bottom of the flute uh, that's one inch. The taper starts at five inches just like we specified and ends in 10 inches and is a linear change in diameter in between those those two bore points. So that's the kind of taper that the program is able to design with. Um, it can calculate any complexity of, of bore shape but it will just design this. Um, and how do we parameterize that? So let's bring up, there are two taper uh, optimi optimization strategies that come with uh, the Native American flute study. Um, they both do the same thing in the taper. The only difference is one does the um, grouped hole position and the other one doesn't. So they're comparable to the whole size and position optimizer compared to the grouped whole position and size optimizer. Uh, we're going to work with the grouped whole, whole one. So let's bring up a constraint, the one we're going to be using for um, this flute. And this should be pretty familiar to you. Um, if you haven't seen the grouped um, whole video, please take a gander at that. So we have the top three holes are in one group, the bottom three holes are in another group, and all of these numbers are, are standard from those optimizers. You, you've seen them before. The addition is these bottom three parameters. So it, the first one, and they're all dimensionless, so they, they apply um, to, to any flute you, you might make. The top one is the ratio of the top bore diameter to the bottom bore diameter. So again, bringing up that picture, it's the ratio of, in this flat section, uh, the diameter here divided by the diameter here. You can set these to any values, uh, upper and lower limits, that you want. Um, the default values say it goes from uh, the top diameter being 80% the size of the bottom to the top diameter being 20% um, bigger than the bottom. As I say, any, anything you, you want in there. Um, the defaults are set that way just because of some unproven sense that I have that any greater taper uh, than that is likely to cause turbulence in the bore of the flute. The second parameter is where that taper starts. Um, it doesn't have to start at 5 inches, uh, so it's the ratio of the where you're going to start the taper to the whole length of the bore. So it can start right at the top or you can constrain it to be a choke down at the bottom below all the holes. Um, and then given that start position, the third parameter says it is a measure of how long the taper is. What fraction of the rest of the flute from the 
taper start is going to be involved in this taper. Is it going to be a little taper or are, you, are we going to run it all the way down to the, to the bottom of the flute? So by varying these parameters, and the program will do it automatically, but you can, by the constraints, uh, set it to have only a subset, you can make a flute um, that has a linear taper from the top to the bottom, a, um, and either get smaller or larger, and I've made both flutes. Um, it's surprising that they, they both do work for a Native American flute. You can specify where you want the taper start to top uh, to, to start. Maybe you don't want it within these um, finger holes. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter to you. Um, all those um, are specifiable by these constraints. Now why would you want to do this? Um, you're going to see in the scenario that we're going to bump our head uh, trying to, to make that that D-sharp flute chromatic within the constraints that we have for the hole spacing um, with a straight bore. And you'll also see that putting a taper in there uh, makes it pretty much a piece of cake to do. So it allows you to have control over the hole spacing and the relative tuning as you change that hole spacing. Um, that's a pretty powerful tool. There's nothing built into the program to say if I put this taper in here I'll have more uniform timbre. So there is no optimizer that say equalizes the cutoff frequency for all the holes. That's, that's for um, probably version 2. I would really like to have some tone quality uh, optimization in the program. But for now it's just for tuning. I said I would tell you how how I make tapers, and there are many ways in the um, the Baroque flute community. A taper would be made by making a two-piece flute, in this case where it gets smaller here, and then making a reamer and cutting this taper from a one-piece blank um, to, to neck it down. I make two-piece flutes, and so I make the tapers. Um, if it's a small taper, I make it by um, cutting the first diameter, the small diameter, and then I'll run the flute actually down a, a wedge of wood so that it starts here not cutting any wood and then falls down that wedge and cuts this, this amount of, of wood and then runs uh, a linear diameter from there on. Uh, that only works for a small, small taper, three or four inches in length. For larger tapers, I'll actually cut a very um, thin wedge that has the taper built into the wedge um, using double-sided tape, tape it to the to the flute blank, and then um, cut the, the taper portion of the flute and with my router and cut the straight portions then as separate operations. Um, fair amount of work, but as you'll see with the, the larger flutes, it's the only way to get there. So, that said, let's do what we intended to do, which is um, first try to make this D-sharp flute chromatically tuned without a taper. So we'll bring up uh, the grouped hole uh, position and size optimizer and we'll open the cons a constraint for that and it's a one and a quarter inch spacing that's pretty tight for um, a D-sharp flute. That's a pretty pretty low flute. We're going to push the system here and you can see um, two groups, um, fingers within each group of the holes are no more than an inch and a quarter and no less than 0.8 inches. We haven't constrained anything else. We're wide open for the hole size and let's optimize that initial flute. But first let's, let's go back and set it to what we had initially. 
it actually won't matter. So this is a thing to take, well, it will matter for this, this optimization. So I'm going to select those two rows that we added. Let's delete them and run this back to one inch. So now we're, we're back to where we started. Um, we're using the same tuning for everything we're going to do this evening. And we're just doing the grouped hole optimizer first. And let's run the optimizer. You can see that the final error is not very close to zero. Uh, it did a lot better than it started with. Uh, so let's see how well it did. So an average tuning error for those however many notes we have. Two, four, six, thirteen notes um, is about eight and a half cents. You'll notice that, that the octave notes that were almost a hundred cents off are now semi-respectable. So this flute isn't an absolutely horrible flute, um, but we have some notes that are 16 cents off, um, 10 cents, 13 cents, uh, 8 cents for the fundamental. Um, depending on the criticality of your uh, your customer, um, this might be an acceptable flute. If we look at it and see if we wanted to do anything to the whole whole layout, you can see that as as is common with these lower flutes, um, the bottom hole, hole one, is smaller um, than hole two or hole three. It's um, not horribly smaller. I mean, this isn't a horrible looking flute. Now, if that whether that hole is big enough to half hole or not, don't know. We could tweak that, and uh, previous videos on group hole spacing showed you how, how to tweak that. We won't go into that now. So th the other thing that we could do is change the weights of some of the, the, the poorly tuned notes to try to at least average out the tuning across all the notes. It won't get any better than an average of 8.4, but we won't have these big outliers. We'll kind of space out the, the tuning errors. Uh, so that's about as good as we can do um, with the uh, a straight bore. And let's, let's keep all of these just in case. Um, going to delete this file. Now let's do that same optimization with uh, a, a taper. And let's look at that taper again. I have not constrained um, where that taper is. It can start at the top. It can have no taper. It can start at the bottom. Um, the taper can be anywhere from really sharp, um, so the taper length compared to the rest of the, the flute can be from zero to, to one. So this is really wide open. So that's also a warning that the optimizer is gonna, gonna be trying really hard on this. It's not going to be anywhere near as fast an optimization as we saw with the straight bore. The straight bore took two seconds to optimize. So we're going to be a little patient as we crank this off. Notice we're starting with the same error. We have the same starter flute. And these optimizations, uh, depending on how hard a problem you've given it, um, on my gamer laptop can take up to two minutes. Um, please be patient. So this took 21 seconds. That's not too bad. If we didn't have um, the hole grouping and let each hole have its own uh, spacing parameter, it would have taken longer. So you can see that it's put a taper in the flute. Let's look at that flute and blow it up. And you can see it's put a taper from um, 
about four inches, three and a half inches, all the way down just above hole one. Um, and it's used the whole hole depth that we, we gave it for difference between hole diameter at the top compared to the hole diameter at the bottom. Other than that, it's not a bad looking flute. In fact, it's a, it's a pretty nice looking flute. Um, how is it for, for tuning? So that's the reason we, we're doing this. So let's see if we succeeded. So instead of having an eight and a half inch um, average deviation, we have a three cent average deviation. Um, the only note that is even out of my five cent standard for tuning is um, this um, the blue note. It's the the diminished fifth, and uh, that that will always always be a problem in in longer flutes. Actually, this isn't the diminished fifth. This is the major third. Um, but um, if you look at the two notes, let's bring the notes over here so we can see them well. Um, if you look at the two notes that that are really regulated by that hole, so this this is the note that is tuned. Uh, the F sharp is is tuned from hole uh, one. These two notes are tuned from hole two. The average deviation between them is eleven cents, and so if we split the difference when we tune this. Um, we're right around the five cents. If we also undercut the hole a little bit to the, um, in this case, to the south side of that hole, uh, we could get this tuning right on. So in fact, this taper worked just fine f for that flute, um, gave us the tuning that we wanted within specs, tweaking it just a little bit um, as far as undercutting holes and that's why why I use tapers and I use tapers really quite often so now what if we did not want um, the taper to be above hole one we thought that hmm that's that might cause a little turbulence, I might see a little timbre change, or maybe you've actually made this flute and you've confirmed that it has, has a little bit of a timbre change. So we want to force that taper down below. So how, how would we do this? So we're starting at three and a half inches. So the, from the, the top of the flute, so you, we're going to do some, some higher math here for a second. Uh, from the top of the flute to the bottom of the flute from three and a half inches to sixteen and a half inches is thirteen inches and I want that taper to be at at least um, ending at oh let's call it um, hey, let's call it twelve inches okay so twelve inches um, on, on the total bore minus three and a half is eight and a half inches out of 13. So 8.5 divided by 13 is I want, so I'm going to bring up the uh, taper things. I want the lower bound for the taper length to be at least 60.65. Let's make a 0.7 so you can really see that I've moved that taper. And let's keep all of this up. We'll do the same thing. We'll start with the, the initial um, one inch bore flute and run an optimization. It took 10 seconds. You'll notice that now the taper ends um, at 
12 and a half inches, 12 and a quarter inches, um, the start changed a little bit. We haven't constrained the, the start. Uh, let's look at, at what that flute looks like for the taper. You can see it's moved up a little bit, but the taper now encompasses all the holes. That was all we, we constrained it to do. And let's see um, what it did for the tuning. Now, as in other optimizations, uh, you don't get anything for nothing. As you tighten constraints, you're not going to get a better tuning, but we don't know how, how much worse it's going to get. So let's find out. It hardly got worse at all. Um, it went from a 3.07 average deviation to a 3.12 average deviation. It just isn't isn't detectable difference. And that's quite quite common with uh, taper uh, calculations, which is why they take so long to do. There is not no real really sharp minimum that the optimizer can f can f just drop into and say yes this is the solution uh, it has to work hard to find the lowest point and you can see that there really is virtually no difference there's two tenths of a a cent on this note four tenths of a cent on this this one's a little bit off 0.7 cents um, but in general, we would not make any any worse. We would think this flute is just fine compared to the other one. So we would make this flute. I would make this flute. Uh, other things that you might want to um, change in in the taper optimizations. I've found from practice that I don't want the taper to start or end among between um, anywhere between hole four and hole, hole six. And the reason why is it, it makes it a little harder to intone uh, to play cleanly the second octave notes. They play, but they take a little more pressure, a little, little harder tonguing to get to, as opposed to uh, when the taper isn't doesn't start or end here. They, they voice very cleanly and very softly. Um, tapers among these bottom three holes I've not found um, any problems with. Um, you may find some solutions, so that's one reason for for changing the constraints. The other one is that, and it didn't do it in this case, the optimizer can come up with a solution that says, and I'll, I'll just change the the starting so you can you can see that. Um, what may come up with a taper solution that isn't so much a taper as a step function. So let's add again our our two rows, and let's make that one point two. And let's come down to 8 inches at 1.2. And then we go to 1 at 8.1 inches. And so a flute like that would look... Ah, we've selected the wrong flute. Let's remember all of these um, menu items work on the selection in the study. So now if we do that, we have a step function. The optimizer will, for some solutions, come up with something like that. And then you would say, okay, I want either the typically the the last parameter how long the taper is I'd want to increase that from 0 to uh, 10 or 20 or 30 percent so that it starts here and ends somewhere here and as our test just showed you you likely find that it won't affect the tuning hardly at all the optimizer doesn't have these aesthetics in mind. It's trying to find the lowest deviation. 
and so that's what it'll do and then you constrain it based upon um, external criteria that you set with the constraints and I think I've worried this topic enough um, it gets much more complicated I I use uh, this optimizer probably 90% of the time when I make flutes just because I have such con control with it in doing chromatic and second octave um, tunings on those flutes and yes it's harder to make the bores uh, but the flutes are just delightful to play okay so as in the other videos let's show some URLs and call it a day so check often for the latest release of the program at this URL um, if you have problems want to see if other people have had problems if you've heard of a problem and want to see if there's a resolution to that problem look at the issues page at this URL um, this this video is likely to be the last for for a while and but you can have links to all of those 14 videos from this page and if by chance another video comes out um, by popular demand or I found a lack in, in the documentation that can be filled with another video um, it will be posted to this page and the wiki which has uh, written documentation discussion and so forth is at this URL so have a nice day.